Happy Sunday, apprentices. So, it's Sunday setup time. So, we had an amazing week last week on the free signal channel and the paid signal channel that I've yet to launch, but I will launch this week. So, those of you that are looking to get a little bit more trades um, and a little closer to the exact time I take trades on all of them, you want to upgrade to the paid signal service that I'll be sending out links at the end of the week. Okay, so let's break down the charts. And again, what this is, is a date on the daily time frame. I'm looking for support and resistance levels or supply and demand levels that when price reaches those levels, that's when we want to start looking for a buy or sell trade. So let's jump right in. Okay, so uh, as you know, I use TradingView.com, and uh, they have a free option that most of you uh, would love to, you know, take advantage of, and then, you know, it's, it's fairly cheap if you do the paid version, and that just lets you put more indicators and scripts on your charts. All right, Australian dollar, Canadian dollar. Let's see what we got cooking here. So it looks like price um, kind of hovered on last week's pivot. Uh, <clears throat> really, uh, on the daily, we're, we're in between our supply and demand zones. Um, this looks like more like that might be a bearish zone. And, you know, I still like the bullish zone down here. So as far as this pair... We're going to leave it orange because we're kind of uh, waiting. We got some news this week on this pair. So let's see what this news does. And, if, you know, if it drives it into our bullish zone, we'll be looking for a buy. If it drives it up to our bearish zone, we'll be looking for a sell. All right. Australian dollar, Swiss franc. All right. So maybe that's a retest. So what we got going on here, man, I hate when I zoom in in this thing. Come on, go back to normal. All right, so we had price breakthrough last week or the last day, and we got a perfect retest, and we're in our bearish zone. So what we want to do now, guys, is we want to, and if you jump on my free channel, um, you'll see if I take this trade. Um, so what we're going to wait for here is a smaller time frame confirmation here on open today. And we possibly see if this is a false breakout or a uh, this is a retracement, a retest, and then we want to sell. And I like this puppy all the way down to our bullish zone here, which doesn't seem right because it's all the way out of no man's land but if i do this you can kind of see why i'm picking to be bullish here right so um yeah this is this is one i'm going to turn red because it's hot green means i'm in the trade so i'm just also showing you guys um you know how i set up my charts so another thing you could do is go to this smaller time frame here 15 minute and you can draw a trend line let's see I uh, kind of like that and you can put an alert on this level S let's just say six seven two eight five let's put an alert six seven two eight five and pat crossing and we're going to say looking to short so basically what we're doing is we're putting an alert if price breaks that trend line on a smaller time frame it's going to give us an alert on our phone or email so then we don't miss this trade so basically what i like what i see right here on the smaller time frame is we've reached the back side of our bearish or yeah our bearish zone we have divergence so this looks like a really good sell trade up here 
Now, some of you may want to play it safer and wait for a break, a trend line break. Um, I'm seeing we're at the higher end of RSI. We got divergence. Um, this one's hot. <coughs> this one, to me, uh, feels like you're going to get triggered a, a perfect sell right here if this is a true retest. Now, remember, we gotta we got to see it touch this line or get really close and then break. So, you know, this one's close. That's why we got red. All right. Australian dollar JPY. Let's back out to our daily. All right. So you can see price fell down, tested our support, got in our bullish zone, and the last day, the last day of last week, strong bullish move up. Now, um, here's where I'm at with this pair. Um, it still could be bullish. What I'm going to kind of look for is maybe a pullback from that strong candle and maybe look to buy again. Um, one thing that kind of has me is we're right on the pivot. So we might see price just kind of consolidate on this pivot for a little bit. We have a lot of news. We're in the middle of RSI. So, you know, I'm still bullish now, but I'm going to wait for a smaller time frame pullback. But because it's in our bullish zone, um, yeah, you can see this retest and in the bullish zone. What I'm going to do is wait for a pullback. Maybe draw a fib on here. Let's do that real quick. So if this actually is zero, uh, look for a pullback to the 0.38 or the 0.5 or possibly even the 0.618. If we see a strong pullback on this hourly, that's the time to buy. So we're going to turn this one uh, red because it's in our zone. And we're just waiting for a pullback. And we want to watch it. So let's do our alert again. Let's do our alert at the point five. So 73952. 73952. 73952. Looking to buy. So I... Uh, I put that little note in there just so when I get the alert, uh, I quickly know um, what I was looking for. And it doesn't mean I just jump right into a buy trade without looking, but it helps organize all these alerts. And, and you know, when I see it is when, you know, I could be out shopping with my kids. I could be mowing the lawn. I could be doing an energy audit. You know, all the things that we dream to do when we start out trading we all trade to live not live the trade or at least those of us that trade for a living that's why we got into this so we could trade to do the things we love so that's why i love setting alerts i don't have to stare at charts all day um i do my analysis share it right here uh like i'm doing with you guys <clears throat> and then when my alerts trigger i'm in um now look we're we're at the 70 on rsi this thing's just waiting for a good pullback it's just wanting to do a good pullback we may even see it pull all the way back to uh the back side of this bullish before it goes uh we'll just have to watch this pair this week okay australian dollar new zealand dollar so this is our uh favorite pair of the week last week so we hit a sell trade on this double top on the daily. Um, now that we've seen it break this support, right? We see it break this support here. That's why I'm bearish. And we're starting to see, uh, I think <clears throat> I even called out last week on the free channel, this bottom, and we see this pullback now. So on, on my paid signal service, we actually took this buy trade at the bottom and made a little bit of money on the pullback, which you're more than welcome to do. It's not as probable and you find yourself 
predicting the market, which a lot of uh, traders out there will tell you is danger, and it is danger. So if you're if you find yourself doing a predictive trade, um, just use a small trade size. Uh, that's what I. That's all the best advice I could give you. Use the smallest size you could get away with. But you can see this was a very good level of support here. You got this high here. Uh, you had this uh, consolidation where prices kept hitting this level. Now you can see price is doing the same thing here. Now, that's why we're not in a sell trade anymore. Uh, that's why I closed it. Um, now what we're waiting for is a, a good pullback. And if it starts consolidating at one of these fib levels we're we're bearish again um that's how i trade now um so this one we're gonna sit here and it's you know it's not hot yet um but what we could do is let's set alert 06934 uh, let's set alert And uh, looking to sell. Um, that way, you know, if we're busy doing something and this does make a pullback to this 0.5, it alerts us. Doesn't mean we take the trade. Just means we're looking at price action. <clears throat> because if it we do get this good pullback to this level, we want to know. We want to zero in on our charts. Want to look at a smaller time frame and see if we have a good spot to short. Now, some of you out there may be saying, oh, I want to short right now because I don't want to miss out this drop. Well, there again, you're predicting the market and it's danger. It, it's fine if you want to take those uh, type of trades. Just use a small, small, small position size so it doesn't... Uh, so you have a chance to where if this does shoot back up to the top, show uh, that this is a strong resistance line, you could put in a rollover trade and get yourself out of this trade. If you do too big of a position, this move all the way up, knocks you out, uh, messes your account up, and you're starting over. All right, I'll speed things up here. So Australian dollar, US dollar. Uh, you can see price hit our bearish zone. Um, and made a break. Now we see a retracement. So what we could do in this situation here is let's just go ahead and go to a four hour chart. And um, let's look at this retracement. So we had a break. We had a breakdown. Yeah. Now we can see price Usually, if it passes the 0.23 or the 2.3 Fib level, it's very likely it's going to go here. So, all of you uh, scalper or intraday traders, if you do this type of analysis and you see price break through on this retracement, this is a very good short term buy trade from the 0.23 to the 3.8. So if, if you're one of those people that just has to trade a lot and you want to be in and out of the market intraday, um, look for this squeeze play in between these two FIB levels. It's a really highly probable trade. We might start taking some of those with small position sizes on our paid signal service that we're going to launch next week so we could get a lot more trades in the week. Okay, so what I want to do on this pair is we're bearish we got a ways to go before we're bullish on our daily so this this could be a really good pullback great time to sell uh, i'm looking on the four hour we have some uh former support here which now became might just become resistance so i'm going to put alert at the 0.38 we're really close on this one 
looking. Now, what I want to caution you guys is on the open today, we're going to have some sporadic moves. And we are getting really close to December, which December is historically a slow or sporadic month of trading and currencies. So you have to have situational awareness and understand price is not going to move like it has uh, all year in the end in in few weeks of November and December. Some theorize because it's the holidays and banks are taking a lot of time off. And you got to remember institutions are what drives movement in these markets. If you think the retail traders like all of us have enough capital to move these markets, you're crazy. Now, these institutions take time off. They're counting their chips for taxes. So just be cautious. What I do in this time of year, right about this week or next week, I don't just stop trading. What I do is I lower my position sizes. I get a lot more scrutiny on my moves. And I take, I get a lot more patient about my entries. So, um, that's what I want to do on this pair. We're pull, looking for a good pullback. If we break this 3.8, look at the 0.5. If we get all the way to the 6.18, my favorite FIB pair, now we got some decisions to make, right? It may just be coming all the way back up to this bearish zone. Um, let's go back to the daily. Boom. And this one was hot. So let's make it red. Okay, <clears throat> Cad Smith Frank. Okay, so we took this trade. You can see this trade last week. Uh, I think I, I, I know on our uh, pay, our free signal service, we took the profit. Now, um, what we got now is, let's see, I need to put my text in here. It's not bearish. It's bullish there. So I still like this pair bullish the rest this week. Um, if we go to a smaller time frame, um, you can see uh, price got into our bullish zone, kind of touched this and is using the S2 level as uh, resistance a little bit. But um, what I'd like to see is, you know, if we break above this, this line, all up to this pivot is a really good trade. Um, but I'm still bullish on this pair all the way up to this resistance line we have on our daily. So obviously um, what we want to see is maybe a, a, a good pullback, a retest of our bullish zone. And then, you know, I like this pair bullish up to this R2 level for a home run trade here. Um, one thing to note as well is this was the head and shoulders that we sold on. And then now we got bullish here, took a small buy trade. We also could be on a pullback of this. Let me zoom in here. This, this uh, bearish move on the daily. You can see price shot above the 0.38 and is now hovering there so one thing to err on a side of caution is on this larger time frame this is a is starting to form a decent pullback so it could be a really good sell trade uh where we're sitting at the moment what that's why we're not taking a bullish trade right now we want to see a pullback on a smaller time frame and see if there's a continuation of this uh, but on a larger time frame, it looks bearish. It could be bearish all the way back down to our bullish level or even break this support. Then you have a really good sell trade. That's the fun in the markets, guys, is you can sit there and analyze the crap out of larger time frames. They tell you one story. It is smaller time frames telling the other. And at the end of the day, you're just going to have to, I guess... 
trust which one you believe the most in and go with it. So, um, let's be, let's go to the next one. Canadian dollar JPY. Another buy trade we took last week. Um, and you can see we're halfway to our profit target uh, this week. And, you know, these are trades that I took on my paid signal service that I'll be launching later this week. Um, again, I like this one bullish at least up to this zone. So let's let's just go ahead and put our bearish. Ooh. Uh, we got to change the color of that. Oh, okay. So we're bullish in here. Let's tighten this up a little bit. It's a big bullish area. If you guys are watching closely, you can see I'm not trying to be too precise with my supply and demand zones. And you shouldn't either. Being too precise uh, I, I get it. There's a lot of traders out there that try to be, you know, they really zone in on these wicks with their trend lines and they try to get exactly the perfect entry point. All you're doing when you're trying to be perfect <clears throat> is one, putting a lot of pressure on yourself to be perfect. And if you just allow yourself and allow price a little bit of room and how you do that is a smaller trade size you're going to have a lot more wins and you're not going to be so critical of yourself so the longer you longer you guys watch how i trade it's okay if i'm wrong i picked a small trade size to get in and if i'm wrong i could either decide i'm i'm wrong and close the trade for hopefully a small loss or I'll wait for another setup if I truly believe uh, the moves and impulse or some fundament fundamental news that is just driving price a little bit outside of our technical analysis that we've done. So um, I still like this this trade uh, at least up to this level. If we go to a smaller time frame here, you can see our profits, the, the pivot, last week's pivot. So I still like price up to that level, especially because it pretty much perfectly respected this um, <laughs> this uh, this uh, support line. So those of you that I, I put this announcement in the free trade signals last week, but I didn't take the trade because we were already up 2% in the free trade signals. I did take this trade on my paid journeyman signals and um so hopefully if you guys were in my free channel and you took these these uh cad trades <clears throat> shoot me an email let me know that uh you re you're really enjoying the analysis and things are going well for you now let's jump over to swiss frank jpy let's go to our daily oh we starting a daily all right so what we're looking for on this pair still is we had a trend line break. We're in this consolidation. Uh, this looks like, you know, on a daily bullish flag patterns, what we got here, right? You see how it's kind of tapering smaller and smaller and smaller. So if I go ahead and we draw some lines on it, just so you guys could see. Ooh. Again, I'm not trying to be exact here, right? You can see bullish move, break of a trend. Now we have this little, it's getting smaller and smaller. And what this is telling me is the pressure is building up more and more. So theoretically, we should see, if we see a break out of this, this resistance line we have here, <clears throat> we like buy all the way up to this level so i'm going to go ahead and put in where i think we're bearish 
we're going to be bearish here. Oops. There you go. So, uh, we're just seeing price kind of shrink, shrink, shrink. It's getting more and more pressure on it. Um, obviously, if we see a breakdown, I'm going to look for a retest of this. But if we see a break up, I'm bullish on a break. It's, I'll probably put my profit target this R2 level. But you can see your next resistance from our former highs here where it double topped, almost triple, quadruple topped here. Is right up here, and you know we got we have one RSI touch here. That's why you see this consolidation. Price is just waiting for a jump up. Uh, so I'm gonna put a alert right here. One ten seven one nine. looking to buy boom all right euro aud so we hit a small win on this pair um we hit a buy trade i believe here for a retest so those of you that were in that trade great um i think we kind of got out of it because uh you know we saw this break now what we have is here is some confusing or some confusion here so price made a break um of this trend line then we wanted to be bearish again if it got up to here and it did and i think we took a sell trade made a small win but uh we got out because trump was talking about trade last week and the u.s china trade talks are really put driving AUD strong or weak now what you could see is price came up touched the pivot and almost just stalled out at the pivot level what this can mean is institutions banks the the main drivers of price love love trading back to the mean so now that price has touched the pivot Think of it as um, it is given permission now to drop. So what we can be looking for here is now that price hit the pivot, we kind of are wanting to see if we're bearish. So if we go to a smaller time frame and you can see price double topped. So it this would have been an awesome sell trade. And then now... Uh, it's t getting ready to touch R2 level on a one hour. So what I'm going to look for is to be safe and higher probability of winning. I'm not going to take a sell trade here. I'm bearish because I saw this divergence double top. And I'm going to wait for price to get to this former trend line and see if this is a false breakout to the upside. And then we have a really good... Uh, sell trade back down to this s2 level and if we go back to our daily chart you can see we may have had we had this breakout this is definitely not just a retracement uh it's price racing back to the pivot level now we want to see what price is going to do at this pivot level and if we see a, another break of this former trend line, I like this this trade all the way back down to this S2 or this looks like very strong support. Was resistance here, became support, became support. Uh, we had a, a break down below that support. But then now, if we see a break of this trend line, I like this pair short. So we'll just keep our eye on this pair. Nothing too panicky to get her. All right, so this pair, we're kind of in the middle. It looks like price didn't quite make it all the way down to our bullish zone last week. And now we're either going to wait for it to get back up to our bear zone, see if it breaks this 
resistance, um, take another sell trade if it's respecting it, and then, or if it shoots down to our bullish zone, we'll be buyers. Nothing big there. Uh, all right, so this one I called out last week. Uh, looks like it just quite didn't get all the way to where we wanted to be, uh, but now we see a strong retracement back up. Um, what I want to do with this, let's throw a Fibonacci on it and see if. Okay, we're sitting right close to the 0.38. Um, if we see it come all the way back up to the 0.5, I'm a seller again. So I'm going to put a, a alert here, 09551. Okay, we're looking to sell. As you can see, price got really close to RSI on the daily. Makes It's on its way, making a strong, good retracement. Um, it's broke above the 0.38, so now we want to be looking at that next level. But this is one we want to keep our eye on, and it's hot. Because if we get here, we get our trigger. In between these two, I'm going to look for some consolidation or some divergence on a smaller time frame. And we might go bearish here. Um, yeah, just be a good trade. Now, if we see it continue to break up, well, I'm going to wait till we get all the way up to our daily bearish zone and see what we, what we have going on here. Euro GBP. Ooh. We are really close to our bullish zone. I think we're so close that uh, I want to make this one red. And what we're going to want to look for is let's go to a smaller time frame and see what we got going. Um, we got divergence. Uh, we got price starting to consolidate. It's slowing way down. We got some news coming out on British Pound. Now, obviously, this pair is very volatile with Brexit. Um, so you can see on, on a one hour, we've kind of just been slowly going down. Uh, we had this huge drop. We've just kind of been slowly going down. Uh, we're getting really close to our daily uh support um yeah so what i'm gonna want to see let's even go down to a five minute chart so on a five minute you can see on this divergence we started having some uptick we're we're really hovering around this pivot so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put this looks like a really strong resistance line so i'm gonna put an alert right here at eight five seven four nine seven four nine and we're going to be looking to buy so what we're looking for here guys just a quick overview is obviously if price continues down gets into our bearish zone it's even better buy but if we see a break up we're going to alert ourselves look at this chart and look for a buy trade because remember, we are really close to this strong support. We want to be bullish. We're a little bit above it. Uh, I don't want to jump and freak out and miss this trade. Um, so we're just going to kind of hone in on this this week. See what price does. See if we could get a stretch down to this strong support and it, and it really respect it then we will be looking for buy trades. Euro G... Ooh. So you can see last week, we got a really big bullish zone here. I think these kind of got messed up because I was on my laptop last week up at Beaver Creek doing some mechanical work. But what we got here, let's go to a daily. So we have this upward trend line. 
now that we saw reversal, we could probably tighten that up. So what we have is this <clears throat> upward trend line. Price respected it. Um, now, this because we didn't reverse here, this looks like it's still bullish all the way up to, let's just go ahead and draw our bearish zone. So I'd be bearish in, in this area, especially because it double topped here, saw our drop. It's respecting this, this trend line. Um, price may even go all the way up to this R2 level. So uh, what I'd be looking for on this pair is go to a smaller time frame. Um, let's put in our fib on here. You have, ooh, 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 ooh. let's get rid of that wrong one. You have this impulse leg. Let's look for price to come back down to 0 0.38, uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.16. So I'm just going to kind of cut it in the middle, 120.027, put my alert. Now these are much smaller, tighter. When we go to these smaller time frames and look for these smaller retracements, uh, much smaller, tighter trades. And on the free channel, I might take one or two uh, and definitely show you guys why I'm taking them. But on the paid signal service, you know, the one that I'm, I'm running my own money on, um, where I'm taking smaller intraday discretionary trades, uh, that's where most of these smaller trades are going to live. Um, there'll be faster pace, and, you know, you got to really be paying attention. So we'll be looking to buy. All right, so you can see price has already started its way back down. We'll get a trigger alert when we hit the 0.38. I'm not, I'm not too concerned if we hit the 0.23 and it starts to consolidate. Um, that might be a, a place, that, you know, as we're watching this pair. But I'd, I'd really like to see price get to the 0 0.38, 0 0.5, um, possibly the the 0.618, and catch a really good buy trade up to her so this one uh because we have the alert on let's put red all right euro nzd let's go back to our bigger time frame here all right so price came down we pretty much res respected this level here so we'll adjust that level I know some of you are freaking out because you want to be at these wicks. Um, I kind of like that this was resistance. Now a support, uh, our bullish zone. Let's kind of scoot over here so we can see, see as we move on. Um, yeah, I mean, we had a strong impulse move up. You see this retracement. This might be a good buy up to this bullish zone um what i'm gonna wait for on this pair um is a retest of this level and try to take a buy here at the bottom especially if it respects again um with this strong of a bearish move uh this could just be a retracement and then now we're starting to see the continuation and be a break so i'm gonna wait on this pair for a retest of this zone this uh resist support then if we see it get to this backside respect it on a smaller time frame uh take a buy trade but be very cautious that if it breaks through this we may be going all the way down to this level and our bullish zone becomes bearish we look for a retest of it and then we're bearish all the way down here so this one we'll keep on the watch Euro, US dollar, everyone's favorite. Uh, so you can see we still had this double top. Uh, I still have the take profits that when we took this trade on the double top. Um, obviously, I think we took profit right here. It was a great win. Um, then last week, I was like, man, I, I closed my trade too early. We could have had a really good uh, nether entry. But now what we see 
is let me get rid of some of this old analysis on here so we could look at fresh trade here so I'm still <coughs> <coughs> because you can see price got all goofy here it's getting goofy again that may be tricking us into a buy back up to our bearish zone but if we throw a Fibonacci uh, retracement on this what we're going to see is price is almost to the 0.38 and this is a good area to take a sell trade down to our bullish zone. Again, these are a lot tighter, 10, 590. So I'm going to put an alert on here. These are a lot tighter than what I've been showing you guys um, before. These are a lot tighter trades. And again, on the free signal service, I'm going to pick the best of two or three of them this week and then continue on in the paid signal service for all of them. Um, this one's hot. We're really close. So let's make that one red. Now, if you guys are watching me on the signal services, when this alert happens, I'm not just taking the trade as you as you can see i'm not putting in a pending order sell trade order i'm putting in an alert that way i can make a decision at that time because this very well could just be the end of this double top and now we're going to get back up to our bearish zone i mean that's the risk we run right but if i see price on a smaller time frame and you can see that's the pivot is right in that zone so if it, I start to see it respect that pivot, I'm going to consider this bearish still all the way down to our our bullish zone here. British pound AUD. Ooh, see that double top? So here's what I like. Um, this one, we have a double top. This is one of my favorite. Uh candlestick patterns especially on the daily so let's go down a smaller time frame um yeah i like it because you have this trend line break this is hot hot so um this might be one we take that sell trade almost after the open maybe tonight um maybe if we see a uh retest of this this uh resistance here out of five minute get in a good spot but this one is already formed this one is formed its double top it is almost giving us that confirmation that it's going to come back down so uh this one is really hot on taking the trade early in the, the week here and then we are going to want to ride it all the way down. Look at what price is going to do in this area right here. <laughs> now, discipline. If we get price all the way down here, we're going to have some really big win, right? And you've heard me say it before. Don't ever beat yourself up for taking profit. I'll most likely, if we get in this trade, take profit right where we get into this zone now and then if we see another break of this zone this will be another good bot or sell trade all the way down to one of these zones right so um yeah i like this pair we're gonna make it red let's see what british pound canadian dollars doing Ooh, we're hitting a lot of uh a lot of uh resistance in our bearish zone here so this one's another good one to look at a sell right here. You can see over here back in June, this is where price kind of on its rip roaring downward spiral. This is where it kind of thought. So the, this is a powerful level. So what we're going to look for this week, retest of that, which it just did Friday, look for a sell trade or look for a break up. If it breaks up out of our bear zone, we're buyers possibly all the way up to here so 
This one we're going to keep our eye on. It's orange. Actually, we're in the zone, so let's make it red. Um, let's go British Pound Swiss Frank. So this is this is a trade uh, I am in currently on our paid signal service and actually in our Wally, my uh, trade copy service, because Wally is in L5. He's taken sell trades uh, all the way down here and prices up here. So I'm looking for a discretionary L6 trade. So I'm testing the waters with planting some seeds into our bearish zone looking for this break. So I have my position sized on my trade copy to where if this does break, come down to this pivot level or down to our bullish zone here, we are going to base essentially get Wally free of all those buy trades he took and possibly walk away with some profit and get him opened back up on our this pair. British pound JPY again, Looks just like British Pound Swiss Frank. I'm waiting for this blow up down to here. Uh, price is going to do one or two things here very soon. And I know this kind of sounds funny, but price is just, it can't seem to break this level. It's consolidating again. You can almost see a double top on a 15 minute. Um, so I'm looking for price to shoot down, uh, spring back down, and get a step back down to these levels, at least on the 15, on a one hour. You know, I love this level down here. Um, we'll just have to wait and see. There's a lot of news coming out. We've double topped on RSI on the one hour. Um, let me just move one of these stars over. Boom. Double top on our side, double top of price. Price is just either going to confuse everyone and spring up, but I'm uh, my probabilities are it's coming back down. So this one is hot, so we're going to turn it red. We got a lot of hot British pound trades this week, and like I said earlier, we want to be very cautious because we're getting into the weird liquidity month of December. So price is going to do some weird things. Um, British pound NZD again looks a lot like the other British pound trades. So it's kind of the same analysis. British pound US dollar um, looks like a bullish flag pattern happening here. If you guys could see that. So we had a break of the trend line. We're almost retesting. We're bullish here. Uh, what I'd like to see on this pair is either a break of this, then you'd be bullish up to this this bearish zone, or if it's going to retest this, come. I'd love it if it retests this flag uh, resistance. It comes back down into our bullish zone, retests this former uh, channel resistance, and I'd be a great buy down here now obviously we'd need a confirmation that's going to continue this so um you know you could watch this this is one we're going to watch see if, if we have a breakout here or if it retest comes back down into our bullish zone be a great buy nzd cad okay so now what we could see is we've kind of double topped here Price is still hovering, strong area of resistance. You know, this one's not really telling me much other than we need to wait a little bit longer. Um, NZD Swiss Franc, same thing. Uh, I'm more bearish than I am bullish. So if we see a pullback into a, this bearish zone, a respect of this resistance, could take a sell trade here. Um, NZD, same thing on NZD JPY, uh, NZD USD, same thing. It's looking a little bit more like we've had in this retest. So be looking for some sell trades there. Now let's get to the US dollar. So US dollar CAD, 
got in our bear zone, rip roaring down. Now what I could start to see here is if we clean up our chart a little bit, you can see why we're bullish here. And starting to see a downward channel, kinda. Try to force it in a little bit, but that's not a bad play right there. You had this thing; it's in our bullish zone because if we really think this is a downward channel, you had a pin bar daily candle, and now you have a, a confirmation bullish candle. So this isn't a bad sell trade. Um, might want to go to a smaller time frame and look. Look to see either a break on this support, right, on the five minute, or a retest of this resistance, and you take your sell trade here. So just give you a you know a good snapshot of what I look for for my entry. You can see you're on a really strong support line here. And you're on the lower side of RSI. So for a sell trade, you want to see a really strong break of this, then you're in or another pullback up to what we think is that channel resistance or somewhere in this bearish zone. And you take a good sell trade. You can see we have some strong divergence. You have a break of the trend line here and a retest. So, you know, this would have been a good spot to sell, um, but as you can see, price finished last week right on this support. So let the opening opening madness happen. <clears throat> Wait for it to get back up here. See, uh, take a sell trade from up here. And uh, if we, if you're in my channel, you'll see when exactly I do. If we do. All right, here we got U.S. dollar, Swiss franc. Kind of had this upward channel now we're in this sideways consolidation um let's just change these lines to what we want what we're seeing now just recycle our lines here okay so now we're kind of in this consolidation pattern and uh, price came down to our almost our bullish zone started to come back sitting on the pivot this may be a continuation down to our bullish zone so what I'm gonna <clears throat> wait for here guys is if I zoom in a little bit bearish in our bearish zone then we see a pullback and touch the pivot and instantly like it got burned ah <sighs> come back down now this may be a continuing so I'm not I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait for a price to get into our bullish zone and look for a buy trade on this one. Okay, good old US dollar JPY, our last pair we're going to look at. Um, so, we are bullish here, or bearish. Let's shrink that down a little bit. And we're bullish here because we've identified this pattern. So, you know, I'm going to see if price comes back up to this bearish zone and possibly take a sell trade. Um, I'm in L3 on my copy trade signal service with Wally. So I'm kind of biased looking for sell trades only on this pair. So obviously if I see price shoot past this bearish zone, I'm going to, you know, make a decision on how much more drawdown I take on this pair with those three trades. But like I've told you guys, I use small position sizes, so I have plenty of room for price to move against me. Probably could even wait until we see what happens here, where um, price has definitely made some support and resistance in the past. But I still like this pair bearish in the pair bearish zone. Uh, there's a lot of news, um, so let's just see what happens with this pair this week. But where it's sitting right now, there's really no play. All right, so um, 
hopefully you like this week. Uh, last week was a great week. Again, get on my free signal services if you've never traded before. Watch one of my other videos on how to open a demo account and just practice. Just start doing it. Then if you are watching this and you want to take every discretionary trade or at least see every discretionary trade I'm taking throughout the week, uh, shoot me an email at Clayton A at AllenFX.com or DTP Show at AllenFX.com. Either one worked just fine. And I'll give you a link to my paid manual trade signal service and then also some information on my copy trade uh, service where once you're set up, it copies and mirrors my exact trades on your account without any action from you. All right. If you love this video or you want to see more of it, make sure you subscribe. Um, I'd love to hear some feedback. Uh, I'm starting to get quite a few questions and I love it. So please, please, please reach out if you have any questions. All right. Have a great weekend and we'll see you next week.